today we're going to be talking about the first topic in this four part plus a bonus series. And today we're covering intention. So what does intention actually mean? Like, you know, every day we wake up, we go to work. Our intention is to get to work on time, hopefully, and to do our job. But do we actually think about what our intention is when going to work? Like, what if we actually sat back and thought about what intention we want to carry out into our day? So let's first look at the definition of intention. Intention is an aim or a planned thing, something intended. So both consciously and unconsciously, how we think about intention really determines what our day looks like. Just a couple thoughts on intention and what it has to do with horses. Now, typically, when somebody's working with a horse, they usually, especially the whisperers or the people that are extremely talented with horses, they have a premeditated plan on how they're going to approach the horse, on what they're going to do with the horse, on what their desired outcome is. Intention plays a pretty big role in what kind of outcome you want to have with your horse. So let's just break down a couple of key facts when it comes to intention. So whether we know it or not, intention is something we carry in our bodies. So through thoughts and emotions, those two key elements are what we actually exude from our bodies, okay? So when we have an intention to do something or say something, what is our body feeling in that moment? Ask yourself that. So our body, unfortunately, has a leak. And when we're upset or we're displaying a, some kind of an emotion, our body is mirroring what that emotion actually is. Here's something about horses, why intention in our body can communicate a specific thing to a horse. So something to consider. Horses have a deep sense knowing whether something is dangerous or not. They have a deep and intense ability to sense danger or reward. And typically they can read that from a person's body language, from how they're standing or how they're walking. And that is because whatever emotions and thoughts we are producing, it's almost like a TV. So when you put it on a certain channel, you're going to see that come out. So when your brain and your heart are on a certain emotional channel, the screen, your body, is what those things are displaying. So when you're approaching a horse and you're pissed off, you're actually carrying yourself in that thought process and that emotional state. So it's really important that when we discover what our intention is, that we feel it in our head and our heart so that our bodies can project whatever our intention is to be. So say for example, you have a challenge with your horse. Say your horse gives you trouble when you're walking him out to the pasture. He gets too excited or too whatever. Your intention in that moment, in my mind, would be to display a calm and relaxed state to balance maybe the hyperactivity of the horse if they're excited to go out to pasture. And you're wanting that horse to produce a calm state before letting them go because that can be kind of a troublesome mess if it's not corrected. So what you want to do in a moment like that is you want, really want to center yourself and calm yourself. And you don't want to escalate with the horse because the horse is already escalated. Not necessarily in a bad way, but there is an escalation, a high energy drive happening in that horse out of excitement. Because he wants to go out to the pasture where it's green and lush and beautiful and wants to eat all the grass. So in order for that horse to mirror what you're projecting, you have to think about what it's like to exude an essence of calm and relaxed. And that will eventually leak into your body so that you're exuding calm. So intention, having the intention of I need to be calm in this moment is really what's going to determine the outcome of what your body looks like to the horse. And that's what's going to change the behavior. So intention is really a thoughtful way of being both in mind, heart, and body. So let's just go over what some of these emotions and thought processes are when it comes to dealing with our horses or just dealing with everyday life. So for the sake of our argument, let's say that state of mind, 
slash emotions is energy. We all have energy. No, it's not some weird voodoo type way of thinking. We are actually made up of a lot of energy, which is why we use terms like I'm out of energy or I'm full of energy. It's a good thing. <laughs> it's a normal thing. It's not in any way, shape or form a spiritual context. It is just what we have inside of us. So here's a list of emotions or energy that we exude that I have found horses are more attracted to. So positive emotions, love, gratitude, joy, excitement, enthusiasm, hope, satisfaction. Those are all positive emotions, right? When we feel any of those emotions, our energy level is usually pretty good. Our energy is pretty attractive to both people and horses. You tend to attract what you're exuding. So if you are typically a joyful person or a positive person or a grateful person, then that's going to be something that's attractive to people and to horses. So on the other hand, negative emotions are or negative energy are the following. Hate, irritation, boredom, worry, criticism, anger, envy, guilt, fear, despair. Did I say fear? Now, fear is one of those ones that it can both be positive and negative. I don't think fear really has a definite way of being. It can be positive fear. It can be negative fear. But in this case, it's negative. So both these groups of emotions, when we feel them in our body, our body has a certain look to it, like we discussed earlier. So when you want to address a challenge with your horse, it is really, really important that your intention is to produce within you a positive emotion something that's gonna help ground the horse and center yourself so out of these lists of emotions ask yourself which emotion are you feeling more often when addressing any kind of challenge or even just normal everyday stuff with your horse what are you feeling and what kind of a response are you getting from your horse our horses are mirrors of who we are. And if we're typically getting a negative response, that could mean that we kind of have to reassess what emotions we're bringing to our horses. I want to challenge you in this first part of this four slash five part series, the horse whisperer tools, the horse whisperer way of being. I want you to pick a challenge that you're having with your horse or maybe not a challenge, but maybe just use this as a test. Use this as a measuring tool. I want you to this week go to your horse and have an intention, create an intention of what you want to do. And then I want you to produce, like we had that in that list, you can rewind on the video to see what that list of positive emotions were. And I want you to embody some of those positive emotions if you can. And a lot of that control happens up here in your thoughts. So whatever you have to think about in order to emotionally produce one of those positive emotions or positive energy, I want you to channel that in when it comes to a challenge with your horse or just an everyday thing and see what kind of an outcome you get. And if you can remember this, write it down in the comments below this video. I would love to see how this little tool has changed maybe the dynamic that you have with your horse. Set your intention first, then embody a positive emotion or energy and approach your horse with that mindset and that body set and emotional state of mind and see what your outcome is. And I want to see it in the comments below. I'm really excited to see what kind of an outcome you get. So that wraps up day one of this series. I am so pumped that you joined me today and I hope you got a lot out of this video. If you did learn something or if something resonated with you, please write me in the comments below. And don't forget, if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button and the little bell so that you can see upcoming videos that I'm going to be posting in the very near future. And don't forget, if you haven't received my free guide, so that you can follow along with this series, go to kdobson.com forward dash secrets and you can just plug in your email address and you will get it right to you after you sign up and it is free. So be sure to get your free guide at kdobson.com and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thanks again guys for joining me and I'll see you then.